All right, yeah, so I'm, I'm Sam Kotler. I'm the tech lead for infrastructure engineering at DigitalOcean. Uh, and today I'm gonna be talking to you about kind of our growth story over the past couple of years. Just some background on who we are and, uh, and kind of what we do. Uh, we were founded four years ago in 2012 and uh, we host the second most uh, public websites of any cloud infrastructure provider after only AWS. Um, this equates to about 1.5% of the entire internet. So about 1.5% you know, of every website on the internet happens to be hosted by DigitalOcean. The service that we provide is a virtual machine called a droplet. And what this is is an instance running on top of our own hardware in our data centers. Uh, and we've launched about 15 million of these uh, as of this month. We have about 700,000 active users all over the world and tens of thousands of active users here in India. And we've raised uh, $125 million in venture capital funding as well as $180 million in debt financing. The way that our business is set up uh, is heavily CapEx intensive, right? Because of the amount of hardware that we buy, the capital expenditure requirements of the business are quite high. And so the reason that the venture capital and uh, debt financing are separated is because the, we want to be able to um, operate the business without diluting the value of the company, right? So we're able to continue global expansion all over the world without necessarily um, kind of diluting that, that value. And so, you know, we, we raised money from IA Ventures, Andreessen Horowitz, and most recently Access Industries in July of 2015. And uh, the debt financing has been in two parts. We had a $50 million round uh, last year, and we just announced a few weeks ago $130 million in debt financing uh, to continue kind of global expansion. Over the last year or so, we've built a few data centers and uh, are building more going forward. So the reasons that people choose DigitalOcean over other cloud infrastructure providers are uh, first and foremost, the fact that we're kind of a cloud that's built by developers for developers, and this manifests itself in lots of different ways, right? So one of them is that, you know, we really work closely with startups and have built a product that we believe startups can scale on top of. So it's really the best platform for kind of startups and individual developers to get started on. One of the things that makes it so attractive is outstanding price to performance, right? So. Uh, the prices start at less than one cent per hour. We bill both hourly and monthly. So, you know, there is a lot of flexibility around our price model. The cheapest instance costs $5 a month. And so we believe this is a super competitive price point. We've also built the entire business to be focused around solid state drives, which are substantially more performant than spinning drives. And so this has been a serious differentiator for us for a long time. When we first started to kind of grow in the, the end of 2012 and the beginning of 2013, solid state drives weren't a mainstream aspect of most cloud infrastructure providers. And so our price to performance from the get-go has been better than the alternatives. And on top of that, we've also built an extremely simple user interface and an API that is extremely easy for people to use. And so developers all around the world use these tools and build infrastructure atop our infrastructure uh, to help scale their growing businesses. As I mentioned, the, the straightforward pricing makes it super easy to understand how much you're going to spend on DigitalOcean, and the price to performance ratio that I mentioned is you know, a huge benefit because people are able to very quickly create you know, meaningful applications on top of our infrastructure. Additionally, we're pretty well known for uh, our, our worldwide community, right? So, um, I'll talk a little bit more about this, but we have 11 data centers in eight global markets around the world. And as part of that, we've built kind of a community of people who are interested in all different things, right? So there's everything, there's tutorials for everything from Python, Ruby on Rails, Ansible, Chef, Puppet, um, all different kinds of things. And we work with writers um, and have our own editorial team to kind of grow uh, that community. So the, the reason that a lot of people choose DigitalOcean is, is just because you know, it's a very, very simple place to get started, and the price to performance is outstanding. So as I said, you know, this uh, is our growth. So our growth has been fast and linear, um, and all around people are talking about how 
um, developers love DigitalOcean. So this is a Business Insider article. Um, and you know, I, I joined DigitalOcean in early 2014 and we were around the seventh or eighth largest provider and today we're the second largest based on that growth. So we've built a cloud that is focused on developers and, and since we ourselves are developers, we've built you know, really great tools, um, including a CLI tool that we actually just recently released, the first official DigitalOcean CLI tool uh, to continue to kind of uh, allow users to easily interact with our system. So to talk a little bit about kind of uh, our bread and butter, which is our infrastructure, uh, we have 11 data centers around the world, um, soon to be 12, which I will talk more about. We have uh, 1,500 peers. What that means is uh, basically we're physically interconnected to 1,500 other providers around the world, right? So our network is made up of a combination of transit, which is provided you know, by kind of the large transit providers, but we also work with uh, peering points all around the world and internet exchanges to ensure that we can kind of move traffic efficiently all around the world and that our customers have you know, the best possible experience. Our infrastructure currently has about 1.2 petabytes of RAM uh, across tens of thousands of machines and 50 plus petabytes of storage. So the scale that we're talking about is, is really significant. The, the infrastructure that we've built, just to kind of show you what this looks like in practice, um, we've really designed a system that has been kind of extraordinarily efficient as we've grown and we're continually working to improve our hardware and our software and the integration between those two things to continue to grow. So here you can see, this is kind of the most recent version of, of our hardware design deployed in our Frankfurt data center. And uh, these are some storage machines. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is kind of what the inside of one of our data centers looks like. We've designed the software and hardware kind of from the ground up. Uh, and so our system is extremely performant and we uh, have 55 second create times which are some of the fastest in the market. The way that we've done this is by building an architecture that separates the data plane and the control plane. So what that means is if you're familiar, it's kind of a networking philosophy. So um, if you're familiar with how networking works, there's this idea of the data plane which is, you know, the packets flow through that part of the system and then there's the control plane which actually sets where the packet should flow, right? So we completely separate those two things which allows us to um, really like continue to scale very rapidly without degrading the quality of service. And our shared nothing architecture is really the main thing behind that. And that's enabled us to build larger and larger data centers as we grow and expand existing facilities really easily. So uh, just to talk about some of our challenges in scaling, one of the most significant ones is, uh, which is actually kind of the third item here, is elasticity. The ability of users to create and destroy rapidly is both a blessing and a curse, right? It means we can very easily take on very large customers without us even having to know that they're suddenly on our platform. Um, but then we run into this problem of maintaining available capacity. And the way that we've dealt with this is by doing kind of large amounts of analysis around user behavior, um, around systems behavior, and continually digging into how the system works. Um, additionally, as I said, since we have 11 facilities, global procurement and logistics is very complicated. And so we've built out kind of a, a world-class procurement and logistics team who, and we work with some great partners around the world to continue to grow. And so as we expand to new markets, you know, these, these concerns kind of um, continue to grow, especially as we move into developing markets. And then finally, ensuring performance and reliability while, while we're growing very rapidly uh, is something that we've spent a lot of time on, right? So we've invested huge amounts of money in, in building a system on top of open source software and contributing back to that open source software. And that's really been kind of a fundamental belief of ours is that a system built on open source is better than one that's not, right? We, we know that open source software is less buggy, um, it's more maintainable and it's easier for us to interact with because when we find issues, we're able to fix them without having to involve kind of a third party. So th we've addressed a lot of these challenges as we've grown and one of the most interesting things is, is that um, as the system continues to grow, we are able to, we've made it more and more stable, right? So we've really hardened the platform. And uh, as I said, we have, we've created over 15 million uh, virtual machines on top of our infrastructure. 
our customers span a huge number of different industries. Here's some example ones. Um, you know, we have a number of, of uh, well-known Indian customers as well, such as NoBroker and CartRocket, um, as well as Ghost.org, if you're familiar with them. They create the Ghost blogging platform, uh, and their uh, kind of community blogging platform runs on atop DigitalOcean. They moved off of their own physical hardware um, around a year ago and, and onto Dio. So we've been working with them very closely. Um, InfluxDB also runs some infrastructure on top of us, as well as GitLab, which is an open source, uh, you know, kind of Git hosting option. Our customers span a whole lot of different industries, including developer tools, e-commerce, ad tech, big data. The system that we've built is, is very flexible, and so people run all different kinds of workloads. As I said, we have one and a half percent of the websites, but that also you know, there's also lots of stuff that isn't web-oriented that runs on top of DigitalOcean. People who run, you know, kind of distributed container systems um, like Kubernetes or Mesos um, or Deus, and, you know, also people who run their own applications that might not be web-facing and might do large amounts of data processing. And our hourly pricing and performance models uh, really allow people to, to run all different kinds of workloads on top of DO. So just to talk a little bit about what's next for us. We're, we currently have block storage in private beta. If you go to the URL up here, you can sign up to get notified once it's available. And what that means is that you'll be able to take, uh, you'll be able to create an instance of any size and attach a block to it. And what that looks like is uh, a block device where you can put a file system on it and then mount it into that droplet that I talked about earlier. And that will allow for more flexible models around how people scale atop of our system. We're also working on monitoring as a service and more advanced networking features. These things uh, are kind of continuing to roll out, so we released floating IPs, which are an IP that you can, which is an IP which you can move between several different instances for things like high availability. And we released a number of tools and uh, articles around how that system works. So those more advanced networking features will allow people to have more flexibility in terms of how their application is designed and how it interacts with the network. We're also investigating kind of additional services. These aren't things that we're sure we're gonna build yet, but just to give some examples, things like load balancing, database as a service, um, you know, we, we might have um, a way for people to kind of connect that droplet to a, a database that's running in the same data center without them having to maintain that database, for example. Same with load balancing, we might have a layer four and layer seven load balancer, which would enable users to kind of scale uh, horizontally rather than vertically. Developer tools are another market that we're kind of looking into, as well as application services, right? Those kinds of core things that people build their software atop. And so with that, we are launching a data center in Bangalore in, a, in about a month. Um, we'll be based here in Electronic City, and. Um, we're extremely excited to, uh, to have the Indian market um, kind of be able to run on top of the DigitalOcean platform. It's a super exciting time, we think, um, and, you know, India is going to be the largest developer market by 2020 overtaking the U.S., and so we really think that having a presence here is going to be, you know, a great thing um, for everyone, and we're super excited to be involved. This will be our first data center in India. You can get early access today by going to digitalocean.com forward slash India and putting in your email address. When the data center becomes available, we will uh, give you access early and we'll also give credit so that folks can try out this new facility. We expect uh, this to offer a number of benefits to our Indian users. One is that latencies from here to Singapore, which is our closest region right now, uh, are not terrible, but they're not ideal. And so, you know, we are very excited to be able to offer those kinds of in-country latencies and work with transit providers to expand our peering network so that we can provide really great quality of service to the Indian market. So that's kind of all I've got. Does anyone have uh, any questions about DigitalOcean, our data center here, or anything like that? Uh, Two questions. First of all, can you do a one-to-one -one comparison of AWS and DigitalOcean for a startup? Sure. So, yeah, second is, uh, why debt? Uh, so understand the equity part of it. In your first slide, you said you took debt, debt financing. 
Yeah, yeah. But then there's an the interest servicing cost and all that. So why did you take trade? Sure, sure. So I'll answer the second one first, and then I'll answer the first one second. Um, the reason that we took debt is because when you take venture capital money, it dilutes the value of the business, right? So the debt financing is, is a term loan. It's a, it's a simple financing structure, which allows us to continue to grow the business without diluting the value of the business, right? We don't want to linearly dilute the value of the business as we grow. To answer the second question, our offering is much more simple than Amazon's today. We don't have the kind of breadth of products. Because we've chased simplicity, we don't offer all of the same products as them. That being said, we believe that we have a super competitive price to performance. And so that's kind of what we're driving off of. The products that we're building next that I talked about will, um, will implement some of, will kind of simply implement some of those same features, right? So um, Amazon has an extraordinary breadth of products today that most users don't need. And so we are kind of focusing, because we're so focused on developers uh, and, and startups, we're kind of focusing on those core offerings first. And we want to be able to ensure that as we grow and we add more products, that we can maintain that same simplicity and reliability and performance that we've strived so hard to build up to this point. And on the core product which you're talking about, startups, are you cheaper than AWS? You were saying you are $5 a month, right? Something like that. Would you yeah, be yeah. cheaper than AWS on the core, core offering for the startup? Yeah, so, um, you know, we have lots of startups that run on top of the platform, and they, because of the hourly pricing and things like that, they're able to spin and spin up and spin down workloads. So, you know, people often um, move workloads between our different regions and things like that to be able to continue to grow. Thanks for the talk. And uh, I have a question about the open sources that you plan to use or you are using already. I mean, uh, your uh, infra is built upon OpenStack uh, or something like that, or you have your own? Uh, no, so we're not built upon OpenStack. We've built our own uh, management system. Um, one of the reasons for that is because there's, there's actually several reasons for it. One is that because our core platform is so um, we want it to be so customizable internally so that we can make changes that uh, are, are beneficial to the user. We have built our own system, and this includes things like our own file store and things like that uh, internally for storing things like backups and snapshots and things like that. So we're not based on OpenStack. Um, you know, I think the OpenStack community has come a long way. When we first started in 2012, they were not nearly as far along as they are now. I'm still not sure if we would choose OpenStack today, but you know they are certainly kind of further along in the development process of that community than they were, you know, eight releases ago. All right. Any other questions? Great, Sam. Thank you very much. Here's a small goodie bag. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Sam's going to be available at the Digital Ocean stall if you have, want to talk to him and network. Thank you. <laughs>